Master Irvan, I thank ye for the wisdom you have bestowed upon my troubled soul a few days past. Yet, I must seek your guidance again, for my aching heart. Ah, oh, my dear Talib, please sit and share this tea with me. It is a blessing to be of help to anyone, especially my students. What troubles you now? As the student sat a few feet in front of his teacher, his eyes were red, and his entire body expressed the misery he carried. He did not even consider taking a sip of the tea that his teacher poured for him. Master Irvan, I... I had committed a most terrible sin. I feel not but guilt. I know God has forgiven me, yet I can't seem to forgive myself. Under the sun, I try to press on with my work, yet my mind bruises upon thy wicked act. Under the moon, I lie restless in a pool of tears with no hope of sleep, for the mind is as unstable as a ship caught in a storm. I understand, Talib. May I ask, what hast thou done to carry such shame? Talib sat in silence for several minutes, with his gaze switching from the ground of stone to the surrounding garden and the clouds above. The teacher, Irfan, waited patiently, with his eyes fixed on his student, until Talib finally met him with his... This, he confessed. I cannot say exactly, Master. It was not something that I had committed to action, but highly considered within my heart. It was all a test from the other party, and now I've been shunned by them. The relationships I held with this family have been severed, I've been cast out as if I am an abomination to them. And deep down, I, I believe I am one. Regardless, that's how much it hurts. Above all, what haunts me greatly is that I saw a dark truth about myself. A sort of evil that I never want to see again. It hurts more than a spear that was thrusted into my side. It seemed worse to me than anything else I had done. <laughs> there have been times when a part of me just wants to cease from existence, to die in an unmarked grave, to be cast out into the void with my memory being wiped from all of those who knew me. I... I am exhausted, Master Irvan. I am sorry. My intention here is not to gain pity, nor the approval to loathe and self pity. Yet how can I continue when my own heart is too weak to see the evil I shall avoid, even when it's before my eyes. How can I be forgiven of this, let alone forgive myself? Of all, Master, why am I so naive with kindness that I'm even willing to bend low to the lake of sin to attain such a Recognition to be remembered as the kind one. <laughs> Forgive me, teacher. I am in the palms of chaos. 
Tears began to slowly fall from Talib's eyes while he turned his whole face toward the earth, as if he felt unworthy to face the world, let alone his master. Irfan knows the pain all too well. He was brought back to a point in his life not long ago as he watched his most astute and humble student slouched in front of him, resembling pieces of broken pottery. After a moment of silence, Irfan turned his sights from the clouds, moving swiftly in the distance over the mountains, and spoke with caution toward his student. Tell him, what thou art facing is without a doubt the most tiring battle. Remember the teachings of the Christian, also Paul, as he stated, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You sought knowledge and how to execute proper wisdom under my wing, though I know so little, and I also continue on improper decisions every day. Regardless, understand that he who increases in knowledge increases in sorrow also. When I was young, there was a wise and loving Christian man who I heard teaching that the law of God does not justify nor make one greater than a beggar. Rather, it is a law that reveals to us the sin we all inherit. Returning to Paul, he also said unto the congregation of Rome, For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. In other words, Talib, by recognizing our tenacious hearts, we come to know the Lord and lean on him for all of our hardships. It is vain to keep the law by way of external practices without keeping it in one's heart. By this we ought to know that any good that seems to come of our own making is originally from the Creator alone, the source of all that is good. Therefore, when we face our spiritual enemies, it can only be managed and won by Him alone as well, and not us. We have not that strength, tell you. We have no strength or the fortitude to face ourselves and our enemies, which is why one needs to seek God to surpass the self. And if we do not seek to surpass ourselves, then one cannot seek the knowledge from the Holy Creator. Irfan pauses briefly, gently stroking his chin while he considers the next point to discipline his student while also providing some level of comfort. A gentle breeze flowed into the courtyard, and the master looked toward the direction from which the cool breeze came before he faced Tali and continued. Furthermore, my dear student, do you feel that the Holy One has forgiven thee Talib's body was as still as a stone, yet his eyes were shifting from left to right until he bowed his head slowly in acknowledgement. Therefore, forgive yourself also, Talib, for the one above is merciful. Thus to forgive others, you must forgive yourself. After Thou must continue to keep the law within thine heart, as well as external practices. Internal and external practices 
are both important. Yet man only sees the external and not the internal, while God sees both. Ask the punishing questions, Tali. Seek the knowledge of heaven and earth. Give thanks to him and to those who love you. Pray without ceasing. Do not give in to selfish desires. Learn to love your neighbor and your enemy. Do not neglect to love thyself. For it is the love of God by which it is possible to love at all. To recognize this, you must also deny yourself. With such sight, one can continue in the light so that sin will be mortified. Do you know the meaning of mortification, Tali? No, Master. It means put to death, to sever a habit that produces naught but wickedness. Remember this. If this family does not forgive thee, then let it be so. Do not concern yourself with them, for we shall all stand before the righteous judge and answer for all our iniquities. If one cannot show mercy unto fellow man, how can one expect mercy from God? You must also continue to work on thyself, better thyself, and love those who love thee, as well as to those who despise you because of your wrongdoing, still act in love upon them. For by this, do not think thyself to be more enlightened or righteous than they. For they have their own strengths and weaknesses like you. If the love of God runs through them, it does not necessarily mean they will approach and forgive thee. However, my beloved student, they may come to establish peace and forgive at least within their hearts. Rejoice in the unknown. In the end, keep your eyes upon that which is above and seek the sanctification of thy own soul. Talib's tears turn from sorrow to joy, for the smile of peace and understanding made its transformation from his previous state. This too also brought a smile to Master Irfan. The mentor and the students sat together until nightfall, drinking tea, enjoying the pleasures of a hookah, reciting poetry, and discussing various topics that could ease the student's heart until the student thanked the teacher for having him and returned home where he must finally sleep a peaceful night so that he can function properly for Master Irfan's class the following morning. <laughs>